what's up seed squad listen if you are new to our channel i'm nikki mom to nigel and hey. nadia and our channel is all about helping you explore your genius right guys yes so that's about finding the thing that you love to do that you're really interested in and trying it out exploring it and it could possibly lead to kidpreneurship like these guys have done so they've taken their interest and turned it into a business so today we're having a business meeting and we just wanted to take you guys inside the business meeting and just kind of hear what we talk about yeah right yeah tune in <laughs> So guys, we've got the business conference, the children's business conference coming up, right? Yes. What we're going to talk about today is crafting your creation story. Yes. Your creation story is what we're talking about today. All right? I want you guys to listen to two stories and tell me which sounds better. Shout out to Boss Lady 101. Thanks for watching our videos and thank you for commenting a lot. I like that you really that you really watch our videos a lot. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, boss lady. Go check out her channel too, guys. Yeah. So guys, some backstory. I used to own a snack company. And so that's what I'm gonna talk about here. Which story sounds more interesting to you? Okay? Okay. Our gourmet crispy treats are made with handmade marshmallow, kosher gelatin, and really good ingredients. That's story one, okay? Or this one. I was obsessed with crispy treats. I made them for parties, always took them to holidays. It was my favorite treat to make. I would make it for everything. And I really got tired of working for someone else. I would come home in tears because I really just wanted to start my own business. And in thinking of what I wanted to do for my business, I said, you know, I really want to focus on something that I love. And what do I love? What do I love? I love crispy treats. So my husband gave me the green light, he supported me, and I spent half a year testing recipes for marshmallow. Because I wanted to make the company different. Most marshmallow has a, have a pork gelatin. I don't eat pork, so I knew the gelatin had to be different. And I wanted to make it something that really stood out and differentiated me from other crispy treats. So I tested recipes for a kosher handmade marshmallow to use as the base of this crispy treat, right? My daughter, she was in a carrier, and I remember I would cook over the stove, and I'd be scared I was gonna burn her because she was with me in a carrier as I was testing these recipes. Like on your stomach? Sometimes she was on my stomach, sometimes she was on my back. Wow. <laughs> right, but I had to be real careful because she was just a baby. And so I finally came up with something that was really great. I loved it, I thought it was awesome. Then I added toppings that I loved, like good quality dark chocolate yeah, to it. Good. It was it was so good. And so I got that together, took it to market. People loved it because it was healthier and it was one of the few crispy treats out there that didn't have uh, pork marshmallow. You know, so people who cared about a kosher marshmallow really loved it. There's pork marshmallows? Most marshmallow has gelatin, which is typically made from pork. Okay. So we've been eating pork our whole lives, even though we're not supposed to eat pork. Well, you've been eating my marshmallow, which was a pork-free marshmallow, yeah, remember? Sometimes. Oh. I, yeah, sometimes you guys slip up. That's true. <laughs> so I took it to market. People loved it. My son became the face of the product. And then my daughter, when she got a little older, she became the face of our handmade marshmallow, right? Mm -hmm. And so then we went on to sell in stores throughout the country and eventually opened dessert cafes as well. Yes. Yeah. So that's story number two. Which story do you like better? I number two. Number two a lot. Yes. Um, you want me to give, just tell you why? Tell me why. I like, I like story number two because it, like, the story number one was just so short. Mm-hmm. Um, Story number two was, and, and story number one didn't tell that much detail, but story number two told a lot of detail. Right. It was long, right. which I like that it's long because you get to see, hear a lot about you and your company, right. um, your snack bar. Good. And good. That's yeah. good. Good answers. Story number two, more, uh huh? Because like Nadia said, story number one was just like. Like one or two sentences, and it was all short and like undescriptive. Yeah. But the second one was super long, and it gives you a lot of detail about your actual story, not just some 
like sub it doesn't just sum it up mm -hmm. it actually goes into the details and all the factors right so. now you see though in the second story i still combined all the information from the first story yeah but i talked longer I talked about, yeah, it did make it longer. And it's not about the length, it's about what's being said though, right? Mm -hmm. I talked about how it had handmade quality ingredients. And um, I talked about, you could tell from the second story that it's a family business. Because yeah. I talked about my hubby, right. I talked about the, my baby girl, I talked about my son, mm -hmm. you guys, right? And you could tell that a lot of love went into making the products without right. saying a lot of love went into making it. You, know? right. you could really visualize the journey. Did you visualize it as I was selling it? All right. So that's what we're gonna talk about today is creating your story. You wanna have your story down so well that it's second nature. In story number one, you only said one sentence. And in, in, in second grade, we we'll, we usually have to do more than at least two. We do like, like we did a story. Mm -hmm. We did a story from a real story. Mm -hmm. We did two of them. Yeah. Um, and we did it. And we didn't use. We didn't do one sentence. We did a lot more. We did like five or six. Wow. Because it's more what? Detail. Detail. That's right. More descriptive. More detailed. All right. So I'm going to tell you why it's important to know your story and speak your story by singing a theme song. Yay. <laughs> So guys, this is from an old TV show because all the shows back in the day had a, a theme song, right? Yeah. Like a jingle? Yeah, like a jingle. Exactly. This one's from the Brady Bunch. What? <laughs> Listen closely to this theme song, okay? Okay. Here's a story. A lovely lady who was bringing up three very lovely girls. All of them had hair of gold like their mother. The youngest one in curls. Here's a story. A man named Brady who was busy with three boys of his own. They were four men living all together, yet they were all alone. Till the one day when the lady met this fellow and they knew that it was much more than a hunch that this group might somehow form a family. That's the way we all became the Brady Bunch. The Brady Bunch. The Brady Bunch. That's the way we became the Brady Bunch. All right, what do you guys think? <laughs> Bravo. Bravo. So, all right, what do you guys think this, this song is about? I think. It's Wait, before you say it, I got one more song for you. Okay. Special appearance by Daddy. Just sit right back and you hear a tale, a fail of a fateful trip that started from this tropic port aboard a tiny ship. The mate was a mighty sailor man, the skipper brave and sure. Five passengers set sail that day for a three-hour tour, a three-hour tour. The weather started getting rough, but the tiny ship was tossed. If not for the courage of the fearless crew, the minnow would be lost. The minnow would be lost. The ship set aground on the shore of this uncharted desert up with Gilligan. The skipper too, a millionaire and his wife, a movie star, the professor and Mary Ann, here on Gilligan's Isle. Woo! Woo! How's that? Awesome! Bow, bow, bow. <laughs> Give it up for Daddy. That was great. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm crying right now. That was so good. <laughs> it was. It really was. So, okay, you guys know what those what those theme songs were about, right? Give yeah. me a quick gist of Gilligan's Island, Nigel. Gilligan's Isle was about how um so these people were on a ship and they crash landed. So you know the story just from that theme song. Yeah. Now do you know what the Brady Bunch was about from the theme song? Yep. What? It was these two people and a woman she had 
three p three dollars. Three dollars. Yeah. Uh -huh. And this man, he uh -huh. had four boys. He had three boys. Three boys. Uh -huh. And then, and then the boy's name was Brady. The yes. boy's name was Brady. Right. That's right. And then that's why. And then they got they they were like, oh, he looks cute. And then they got married, and then and then they were like, and they were they were like singing the song about about we could become a family. That's or right. Something. That's how they became a Brady bunch because the boy's name was Brady. That's and right. They were All right, so you guys know what those shows are about purely from the theme songs, right? Yep. All right, so I I chose those two shows specifically because every show back then had a theme song, but those two shows specifically because I'm currently reading this book. Called Primal Branding. It looks creepy. creepy on the front. It does look rather Here. creepy. <laughs> it's like um, it's like a puppet, but it's it's just creepy. In the book, the book says this: When Sherwood Schwartz, creator of Gilligan's Island and The Brady Bunch, was asked why his shows began with a theme song outlining the show's premise, his explanation was simple because the confused do not laugh, he replied. The confused do not buy either. The theme songs fully explained the show to make sure the viewer was not confused because confused viewers don't watch. Confused buyers don't buy, right? Yeah. Part of what makes a strong brand is that people understand and appreciate the story behind the brand, right? right? They have clarity on why your business exists and they have some affinity or some compassion for the backstory. All right, so like Jeff Bezos, right, who owns Amazon. And is the richest person in the world. His backstory is that he was uh, in the back seat of his car writing his business plan as his wife drove in the front seat across country so they could meet, so he could meet with some uh, venture capitalists to give him money for Amazon. So he wrote his business, business plan in the car across country got to the spot to meet these people, got the money, started Amazon. That's a story that, you know, it's a good it's a good story. Some of the people will be like, oh wow, look at that. Look at the effort he was putting in and this is what has resulted from it. Let's talk about the backstory of Lucy. Yes. Kick it off. Tell me the backstory. What do you think? So this is story time. <laughs> there once was a kid named me. We don't have to go back to your birth, okay? I'm gonna go back to my birth. <laughs> I really was really into video games and I kept asking for them, but my mom was like, you need to buy some for yourself. So I was like, okay, well, I need to raise money, so how do I do that? And then I realized, oh, my mom has a business. So maybe I should try to have business on my own too. And then Nadia wanted to have business too. So we- So pause there. So let's talk about those three components. You were into video games. You were like, can you buy me more video games? And mom and dad were like, no. And so I said, you need to make your own money so you can buy your own video games, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You decided to start a business. And since I have a business, I said I would teach you how to do it, right? And then your little sister was like, I want to be in the business too. And not little. Yeah, your younger sister. Can we go younger? Yeah. She was like, I want to be in the business too, right? Yes. So so think about that. So right there, that part of the story, people are going to resonate with that story. Don't you think? Yeah. Because yes. moms and dads are going to relate. They're going to be like, yep, that's all they want to do is play video games. And we're always trying to find something more productive for them to do. That's what parents are going to think. So kids your age, they're going to be like, I feel you, bro. Video games all day. No. <laughs> No, 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 it doesn't. And then other kids are gonna be like, Nadia, they're gonna be like, oh my gosh, I wanna start my own business too. Okay, so the gist of it is this, right? Those, are, That's how it started. The video game aspect, you came to me, I said I'd help you, your sister wanted in on it. That's the beginning part of your story, right? Thank you, video game person. You helped us come to life and help us make a business. Thank you. So the next part of the story is the four of us just sat on the sofa. We started brainstorming what kind of business we could do, the name for it, the tagline for it. And mom thought it would be a good idea for you guys to present your smarts and your sarcasm and your funniness in an uplifting, positive way. 
because you guys are both sarcastic, but funny and very no, smart. Not. We all came up with taking motivational sayings and making them into little illustrations. Right? But this isn't a little illustration. It's just our. Yeah, I don't have one on right now, but give them an example of what we're saying. You know, so we take motivational sayings and flip it into literal illustrations. Give them an example. Okay. We do um never give up. Yes. So what is what do we show in the illustration that makes a difference? it different? So it's it's not just the quote, it's not just the saying never give it's, up. It's the it's a funny illustration because if you get the shirt there's a balloon thing that somebody's in the shape of what? And it says up. Right, in shape up. of the word and, up. Yeah, uh -huh. and somebody's holding it, mm -hmm. the person's holding it, and then another person is trying to fight over it because they want the balloon. Right, yep. exactly. So that's one of the examples. And so, so the gist of the business was that you guys would attract other kids who are also smart, who are also funny, and also has that sarcasm about them that, that would really get what you're trying to portray in these illustrations, right? Yep. Okay. And so then you decided, how are we gonna get, so we got the idea, we have the illustration, what are we selling, right? We can't just sell a saying, so you guys decided to sell it on what? Online. Website. But on what kind of products? Shirts. Shirts, rags, mugs, pillows. Right, so you decided. Tote bags. You tote decided. Bags, um, hats. Said hats. Shirts. Right, so you decided and to... And there's also like tank tops. Right. Shirts. So you decided that a great way for custom, for customers to showcase the illustrations right. would be on t-shirts and totes, yeah. totes that they could rock outside or Hats. on items for the house, right? Like pillows and mugs, right? That they would have inside the house. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to help you guys formulate your story because you're going to have to talk about this yourself soon. Okay, so then Nadia came up with the tagline. What? Um, What's the tagline? I started thinking, I said explore, and then I said your, and then I was thinking some more. Mommy helped me with genius. So I said explore your genius. And then mommy's a genius. So. Right, because what? And, and everybody has something special inside of them. That's right. your genius. That's right. Your genius. Right, genius. right, right. right. Genius. So you guys want to be an example to other kids to encourage them to try things that they like or things that they may be good at, which could possibly lead to them owning their own business. Right. Right? That's what Lucy's means. It's just being free to try different things as you grow. That's what Lucy's is about, being free to try different things as you grow. Right? Mm -hmm. And so we showcase that through our videos that we create on our YouTube page. Yes. These things are points that you guys need to really get. This is the story, you lived it, you know it, but you need to be able to uh, to be able to relay it, to tell it to other people, okay? Yes. So when you're presenting your business to your school and you have the floor, and when people ask why you started your business, mm -hmm. you're gonna lead with the story. Yes. Lead with the story. And there are a couple things that you're gonna rem you gotta remember when you're talking about your story. You got First of all, you guys are gonna practice it so you can get it down, right? Um, but always be, number one, always be aware of your time. Definitely. Because remember when I was telling the Malacrunchy story, one was real short, one was really long. Because sometimes you might not have a lot of time and you might need to summarize your story quickly. Feel people out, gauge their level of interest because some people might not really care, you know? So you wanna gauge them, see how interested they are so you can know how much to reveal to them, right? right? So if you have your story down, then you'll be able to know how to consolidate it quickly just to get the, the main points across, get the main points across. Now remember this, this is really big. When you're explaining your business, always be answering two questions. Yes. These are the two questions your audience will have in their head. What is it and why should I care? <laughs> okay? So you always come from their side. Think about what they're thinking in their head and they want to know, they want to quickly know what is it you're talking to me about? Why should I care about it? So if they want to know why should I care, that means you need to be making sure you show them what the value is in it for them. Right? Why should we care that why should we care that you care that you care about us? Why? 
I'm not sure. I got the way that you can answer that is in terms of who, what, why. Who we are, what the business is about, why they we're should, doing. why we're doing it, right? Why we're doing it. And that why is the value that is in it for them, right? right? Okay. Um, also, never get tired of telling your story. So going back to my, my former business, when I had the snack company and we did events, we did farmer's markets over and over again, seven times a week for about seven years, back to back. And there were always new people that we were talking to. And every time a new person came up, this was dozens of times a day, I would tell the story again and again and again. Now, you tell the story so much, one, you're gonna get polished, right? You're gonna get real polished and you'll be able to say it with, with right. ease. Um, but two, you have to have enthusiasm every time you tell it, right? Because because for those people that you're talking to, it's their first time hearing it. When people think about Lucy's, yes. we want them to think about exploring their genius. Yes. And we're saying, here's one way we do it, by taking motivational sayings and flipping them into funny illustrations. Yes. Right? Yep. There yep. we go. All right? Yes. So that's the creation story. Now you guys are going to go and practice it so you can get it down. Okay. You ready for that? Yeah. Yep. Are you guys having any So guys, if you like the information that you are getting in this video, if you want to start your own business, then follow along with us on this journey as I help these guys build loose seeds from the ground up. We have fun with it. A lot of good things happening, a lot of good things to learn about building your own business. So the way to do that is to make sure you click the subscribe button, yep. click that thumbs up, and ring that bell to make sure you get notified whenever we post a new video. Yes. All right, see you next time. Bye. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.